guys, this is Mr. Redelli, and we're going to work on doing some calculations here with our spreadsheet. So as always, we're going to create, and we've got our spreadsheet, and we're going to create one. And the first thing we're going to do is name it. Remember, that is critical. I always want you to name it. So we're going to name it Sales and Taxes. Click OK. And we're going to start here, uh, cell B8. We're going to enter January and then February, March. I'm going to show you a little trick here. We're going to highlight all three of those months and then I'm going to drag it down about 10 more spaces or so. It would sometimes hard to calculate, but it's about 10. And let it go and see what happens. It populates all the months of the year automatically. It knows what you're doing. Okay, so uh, we're going to enter here, let's see, 12 gross sales, which is basically everything the store sold during the month. We're going to say state tax, the city tax, I don't know if you know, but uh, like in Panama City, you pay state tax, the city tax, and a county tax, okay? So every state, every city has different rules for that, right? Let's see, sales after taxes, okay? So we're going to start entering some random data here, and again, it let's say the city we're going to make the state tax six percent the city tax two percent okay and what i want to so as total taxes is eight percent so to find out the city tax or the state tax for example the state tax it will be your sales for january times six percent to find out how much we is how much you paid in the, on that month so the best way to do that is to multiply that sale the sale were January in a gross sales intercept and we're going to multiply that times 0 0.06 okay and that will give us the total uh, amount that we paid on taxes for that month okay uh, the first thing you need to know guys when we're entering and we're going to enter their six percent and two percent for city tax uh, when we're uh, entering a math formula, you have to tell the spreadsheet that you're doing that. Otherwise, you will just type 6% times whatever. You don't want that. You want it to make a formula. So what we're going to do, the first thing you do when entering a formula is you type equal sign. The equal sign tells the spreadsheet you will be entering. Everything that goes after the equal sign is a formula. So we're going to go to the cell where we want that formula placed and we're going to say equal okay let's see equals and we're going to multiply we're going to click on generate gross sales okay because we want to multiply that number times which is the asterisk 0 0.06 that means six cents on the dollar times 0 0.06 Okay, that's the total. We're gonna drag it down to copy and paste it. Like if it was 10%, you would multiply it times 0.10. But since it's less than 10%, it's times 0 0.06. And for the city tax, it's equals. And again, we click on the gross sales for January, which is cell C8 times 0 0.02, and that's your total for January. And we copy and paste it. Then we're going to do the total taxes. For the total taxes, you have to add your January tax, uh, the two of them, the city tax and the sales tax. Okay, so we're going to say equal. So remember, always equal, yeah, and that's the state side tax for January, plus the plus sign, the the sales tax, the city tax for January, and that's your total. Then we copy and paste it and the sales after taxes. So we're gonna subtract the gross sales, we're gonna subtract the total sales from your gross sales, okay? To find out how much actually, how much money actually we made after paying taxes. So we're gonna say equal, we're gonna click on your gross sales, minus sign, the total sales, okay? And that gives you the total. Okay, so that's logic. You just have to figure out what's the logic, what's the best way to do it, a little bit of math there. Okay, but it's not that complicated, guys. Um, all right, so now we're gonna do total, and we're gonna do a sum. You remember how to do that sum, and then highlight all the cells, and you press the enter. So remember, you have to start with the equal sign when you're actually entering the formula, and if, like the sales after taxes, just remember you take your gross sales and you subtract 
the taxes, whatever you pay in taxes, okay? And for the city and state tax, you have to multiply your gross sales times 0 0.06 for the state tax, 0 0.02 for your city tax, okay? And over here, we're just totaling everything. Let's see, some, we're gonna highlight and percenter, and we're good to go. And now we got all these numbers over here, all right? So now we're gonna highlight all these numbers. And somebody gave me a good tip the other day, one of my students, and I don't remember who it was. But you, you had the dollar sign there, okay? The difference between the dollar sign, the f number, uh, formatting the number is then formatting the number you have more flexibility what if you don't want the decimal points you want the whole number okay but in this case the dollar sign makes makes it perfect okay because it by default it gives you the two decimals so that's good and it gives you a dollar sign of course so that's perfect okay so let's see okay yeah everything looks good all the percentages and everything in let me see what we're gonna do here. We're gonna try and graph it or chart it. So we click on that little icon there, which is the chart icon. Okay, and find a, a chart that really represents your data well and that is easy to read. Like this one, uh, those lines are a little small. Hard to see some of them, especially for older guys like me. Uh, you see those, uh, and you see how you can see all the totals, which is pretty cool, just by putting your mouse over the line, it tells you what that line represents. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Okay, let's look at this one. I kind of like this one because you can see your gross sales and your 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 taxes that you paid. And those are the blue line and the purplish line that goes all the way up. So I like that. So let's click on it and let's grab it and drag it. Awesome, okay. And let's see. See, so we can see it very well. So that's your chart, your chart to represent all your data. So that's pretty cool. We're gonna name this, this data, and we're gonna enter. Let's see, um, furniture and appliance appliances of Bay County. How about that? And we press enter. Yeah, we're gonna make it a little bigger. 14. Oh, well, that's not good. Okay, because now it's, it looks kind of weird. So what we're going to do is going to highlight. Uh, okay, that's not good. Okay, let me control Z to undo that. And what we're going to do is drag it across two, cell, two cells. And then we go to here and go to edit and merge cells. You see, when I merge the cells, you now you have two cells, but we need one more. So we're gonna merge that one large cell with the next one, the smaller one, and that looks perfect right there. Let's give it a little, make it a little better. We're gonna make it bold. And then uh, let's give it some background color, which you know, we have to do that anyways. And remember the importance of that. Some people say, well, that's kind of silly. It's not silly. Because when you're showing the data to somebody, remember the data is not for you, it's for your clients or maybe for your salespeople, whatever. So you want that data to be easy to uh, for the for the person to read. You know, you don't want it to uh, to be all the same color. You know, separate the items, what the items that really matter. Now, in this case, you definitely don't want to make each column a different color. You don't want one color for the sales tax uh, for the city, and one for the state, and one for the gross sales. Otherwise, you have too many colors, and then it looks a little weird. But you can color all that data the same color, and we're gonna go up here. But again, you need to make it attractive. Remember, if your fonts, if it's hard to see, change the color of the font. You can change the color of the font so it will be easy to be it will be easy to read against the background that you chose. So you don't have to compromise on the background as long as you change the color font. But remember, stay away from neon colors, colors that are hard on the eyes. You definitely don't want that. And this one, you know, I don't know, I know it doesn't look perfect, but you guys are much more artistic than I am, and I know you can come up with some awesome combinations of colors here. But definitely, I like the idea of staying with the soft colors, which makes it a lot easier to uh, to read the data, okay, and that's the ultimate goal. Can, can you read the data easily? All right, so okay, this doesn't look right. I guess I did something wrong here, so let me fix this. Okay, 
yeah, definitely wrong. So anyways, uh, I see how much easier it is to read it. And maybe I should have changed the font on that, on the month of the year, you know, to make it easier to read. But, but again, you know, that's something for you. It depends on what you like as long as it's easy for everybody to read, okay? So we're going to go, let me see what else we can do. Okay, let me look at the chart. Yeah, what I'm going to do here is, uh, yeah, I forgot to put the name on this chart. So we're going to name it uh, maybe sales 2011, pretending that the data is from the 2011 year. Uh, well, put it in the wrong place there. Let me try it again. Sales 2011. Okay. And that makes it a little easier. Let me get rid of this on top. Okay. All right. And one more thing here. Let me see. All right, everything looks good. We're gonna change, you cannot see at the very bottom, but we're gonna change the label. Remember there, there is a label at the bottom, okay, which you cannot see it on this video, but we're gonna name it Sales and Taxes 2011. So that would be the label at the very bottom. And we're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna click here on chart one, and we're gonna click on Move to on Sheet. Okay, so what it's gonna do, is gonna move it to its individual sheet. The whole thing, okay, See, we're gonna name this. Let me see, we're gonna name it Chart One uh, 2011. All right. So you see now you have two worksheets. All right. You have the one with your data and the one with your chart, and that's a good way to organize your data and your charts. Okay. You can have all your data in one and all your charts in another one, or you can have a set of charts in data for each one. Uh, for each year or for each month, whatever, okay? And the whole spreadsheet itself is called a workbook. Each individual sheet is called a worksheet, okay? So you need to separate it to workbook, is all thing, worksheet is each one independently, okay? So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know how you like it, and I hope you learn from it. Thank you.